everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, hi, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. Um, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be doing some maintenance on my multi-needle machines. I have a Brother PR1055X. That's the one that you see on the left. It's a 10-needle machine. The one that you see on the right is a Brother PR670E. And um, that's a six needle machine. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the regular maintenance on your machines. Now, um, maintenance is something that is really, really important. Okay, it's kind of like owning a car. If you don't, you know, if you if you own a gas car, you know, um, you know, you got to do your oil change and all that kind of stuff and everything, so that you can keep your car up and running. Um, you know, I drive electric, so you know, I don't have to do that, luckily. But um, you know. These machines are no different than, you know, owning a, uh, a very expensive piece of equipment and doing regular maintenance so that you can make sure that it's running correctly and, you know, you it lasts you a very, very long time. So one of the things that you have to do is you have to oil it regularly. You have to change needles regularly. And I'm going to do it and I'm going to show you exactly how I do these and what tools I use and everything. So hopefully if you own one of these machines, or even if you own another multi-needle machine, I'm, I'm not sure how the other's maintenance works on the other kind of machine. So I would really look into that. It may be a little similar to the Brother uh, machines. Not too sure. I'm not very um, familiar with the other brands. But, you know, if you do own one of these two machines, this is exactly what I would recommend doing. So let's get down to it and I'll show you exactly how I do the maintenance on both of these machines. Okay, guys, now I have like a little goodie bag and stuff, and I'm going to show you exactly what it is that I have in this bag and what is it that I use in order to clean the bobbin area. Now, right now, I am in front of my brother uh, PR1055X, and in here is where the bobbin is stored, okay? And I'm going to show you what you should be doing to clean this area right here. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty neat, but I'm going to take it step by step because if you're new and you just got the machine, you want to know exactly what you need to do, okay? Now, right now, I have the machine off. So let's just talk about the tools that I use, all right? Something that you're going to need. Now, first of all, your machine should have come, should have came, or come, I think my English is all off. You should have one of these, these tools, okay? Now, what, is, what am I going to be using this for, okay? What I am going to be doing is I'm going to be screwing off this top plate, okay? This is something that I do on a monthly basis, okay? Um, it's what you want to do is you want to clean this area up here out of the threads, and we'll I'll show you a closer view. So make sure that you have one of these handy, okay? This came with your machine. So usually what I'll do is I, I sold myself a little package, okay? A little, you know, a little zip case and this is where I put everything that I clean my machine in that way you have everything intact or everything is in one place you don't have it all thrown all over the room so it just makes it a little easier so make sure that you have this okay now the other thing is your machine came with little brushes okay that look like this okay I have this brush right here and I have the little brush that comes like this as well okay now you can also get other brushes that work as well um you know if you go to the dollar store you can buy uh these are like little makeup brushes make sure that you if you do want to invest in this make sure that it's super super soft okay you don't want anything that's really really harsh to go in there so always um you know test them out feel them out if you see that they're soft then I would say go with it. Sometimes they sell them in packs. Like I have this one. It came three in a pack, which I really like. And the reason why I like this one is because if you look right closely, you can see that they have like different types of brushes. They're all super soft. So they make it really great to take the lint out of them. Okay. Another great idea is this is um, disposable eyelash um, brushes. Okay, you can get them off of Amazon. Don't go crazy like me. I ended up buying like a whole bunch of them. You only need a handful. You can probably even pick these up at the at the um, dollar store as well. You just need them. These are also really good to get the lint out as well. So this is something else that I've um, used as well. And then another thing that I purchased, this I actually got off of Amazon. I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. 
It's these little small Q-tips. If you think, if you, if you, um, if you do a search on, uh, sewing, sewing, uh, cleaning brushes, you'll probably see like a pack of these. These will last you forever. I mean, i they came like, I think a pack of 10 and I'm still using like the first two that I pulled out of that case. And, um, I just use it so that I can go in a little deeper in there and pull out the lint and it kind of works fine. Okay. Some people use the Q-tips. I don't really care for the Q-tips because I feel like the cotton is a little bit loose on the top of a Q-tip and I don't want any type of cotton to get stuck in there. So this kind of really does serve its purpose. Um, here's a little close up so that you can see it's a really small cotton area in there and I kind of like it because I don't feel like it's going to get stuck in there. Okay. So um, now that I got all, I showed you all the stuff that I use in order to uh, clean the machine, let's get down to it and I wanna show you the areas that I clean, okay? Um, you open this up right here and I'm going to do close-ups, okay guys? Because I really feel that, you know, it's important for you guys to see the areas. Now this is where you have your bobbin case and you can take this out right here. You're gonna take your bobbin case out. You're also gonna clean this out as well, okay? Make sure that you take out the um, the bobbin from here, okay? This is the magnetic bobbin, so sometimes it gets a little, you know, because of the magnet and stuff, it gets a little bit rough to get out. And I know that if I pull this out, there you go, it might be a little easier, there you go. So I got my bobbin out. Okay, this is the um, thing. Make sure that you take a brush or something and just comb out in here. Sometimes you have a little um, dust in here. Sometimes also, and I'll show you, people take a little credit card and there's like a little slit in there. As a matter of fact, let me go get a little, um, not a credit card, a little business card. And I'm going to show you exactly what people do. Okay. Okay, I got my little card right here and I'm going to show you exactly what I do. So here's your, here is your bobbin case. Okay. And I, I already took a little brush and sorry, trying to see where did I put my brushes? That's not good. Right. Okay, guys. Now this is the bobbin. Okay. And let me show you exactly how I clean this out. Now your machine comes with like a little brush like this. So what you do is just take the brush and you just go around and make sure that you get any type of lint that you have in there. This should be nice and clean. Okay. Now, another issue that sometimes you have is this is the bobbin case. I'm going to put it a little bit closer. As you can see right here, um, and I'm going to show you right here. Let's see, can I focus? Okay, right here, you're going to see that here sometimes you're going to get a little bit of lint, okay? So what people usually do is you take a little credit card, you put it right in here, and then you just slide it down, okay? And all it is is just if you have some type of, here, let me just do it again. Just do right, right here underneath the screw and then just slide it. That's all you wanna do is just slide it like that. That's it. Because if you have a little bit of lint that is stuck underneath the slip right here, then you wanna get it out and it's really easy to take it out with the credit card. And then that's it, okay? Don't force it or anything like that, okay? So now you know that your bobbin case is nice and clean, okay? So then what you're going to do is I use the magnetic uh, bobbins for my uh, for my multi-needles. The magnet is what goes in here, okay? So then what I'll do is I'll pop it in, okay? And you go around, and then you just place it in that hook. And then when you put it in, you should have at least a two-inch tail. I sometimes do a three inch. It really doesn't matter, but it's just to make sure that it catches up. It should be at least two inches long. Now I'm not going to pop this in yet because there is some more cleaning that we're going to do in this. And I want to make sure that you guys see exactly how I do the rest of this. Okay. So let's get, let's start cleaning the inside of the bobbin area here. Okay, guys, so here we are at the bobbin area, okay? So here is the brush that it came with, all right? So usually what you do, and it is a little dirty, I see how, I don't know if you guys can see, but I do have some, some lint in here. 
So usually what I'll do is I'll go around here and what you're doing is you're putting the brush in and then you want to take the lint out. You do not want to try to push the lint back into the machine. You want to take it out, okay? And I don't know if you guys see the little lint that's flying around over here, but this is what you see. This is what you want to get out, all right? So this brush is really, and I, I'm sure you guys see it. If you look really hard, you can see all the lint coming out. See, like right here, I have like a little, a little bit of uh, yarn. I'm gonna take that out too. See, okay. I'm gonna take that out, and then I'm going in. Now, what I like about the other brushes that I got from the dollar store, and even this, this brush really works well. You just go right in, and then you're just pushing it out. Okay, so I just go in, push it out. I go all the way around. There you go. Just pushing a little bit here. See? All you want to do is just push out the lint. That's what you're, you're doing. Okay? Don't go crazy. Don't force your brushes in there either. Okay? You don't want to mess up anything. It's just taking the lint out. Okay? And see how I got stuff out? See? I even got a little bit of a see the dirt so okay now I let me show you also the other brush that I like I like this brush too I got this from the dollar store and this works really great as well I just go like that and I just push it out see how more comes out so I like to to do that do not like I said don't force anything and then also when I was talking to you guys about these little these little Q-tips that I got and stuff like that, what I like to do is I like to go in these little spaces right here, see? And just make sure that I get everything because it's really great for the small spaces. You know, I really do like to get as much of the dust that I can out of here if I can possibly get it out. See, and I got more out, see? It, it works really good, okay? Now, let me show you about this place right here, okay? This is where you get your little um, wrench thing. And let me just move you up a little bit because that way it makes it a lot easier. I really like to show you guys the details of how to do this stuff because it makes things so much easier when you guys see it. So I'm just going to move the camera a little bit. But I want you guys to get a good angle of what I am doing, okay? Now, you're going to see that there's two screws that are right here. These are the screws that you have to undo. And so I usually just take this screwdriver and I still have my machine off, okay? I don't have the machine because I'm not oiling anything yet. I'm just cleaning my lint. So take the screws off. You just, just unloosen them, okay? You should be able to just... And then once you unloosen them, I just kind of maneuver it like this with my fingers. And it'll go around. But it's just not too loose yet. But let me just loosen these now. I'm just showing you guys how to do this here. I like to really show you guys all the steps. Because it's not worth to watch a video and you just... You don't really see exactly what is being done. So there you go. See how now it'll see how it comes out. You just massage it. Now be very careful with these screws, okay? You don't want to lose any of these pieces, okay? So usually what I do is I just place it right on the stand right next to me, like right here, okay? This is what I do, all right? So, you know, be very careful. Um, make sure that the environment that you're in, you don't have a lot of commotion going on or anything like that. Nobody's bumping into you. I always like to do this when, you know, it's nice and quiet in the sewing room and it's just me. See, this is, and then you just turn it around with your fingers. Um, that way it's, it's nice. Now, I think I just cleaned this machine, but I wanted to do the video to show you guys. So I'm going to undo everything and I'll just re-clean it. It's okay. There you go. So see, it got my little screw. I'm going to put it on the side. Now that you have taken out these two screws, now what you can do is you can lift this up. So 
what I'm doing is I'm lifting this up. Now, I want you to notice also when I lift this up, there is a piece right here. Be very careful. This It seems really delicate, but don't, don't mess with it. You know what I'm saying? But this is going to go right back in here when you go to put it back together. All right. So I just want you to get this out. Okay. Now, what I usually do here is you have this. As you can see, there is a little bit of lint right on there. Okay. So you just clean this piece out really good. I do it on both sides. Okay, there you go. Um, this sometimes might have a little bit, so I just gently do it. Don't remember, this is a very thin piece of plastic. You don't want to break this. So you want to be as gentle as possible. So just take the brush and just you know just to take out any type of lint that you might have there and you put that aside as well okay now let me move the camera up a little bit and move you close so that you guys can see okay here we go now this is where the thread gets cut okay these are the little knives this is the piece that gets um cut now i have the machine turned off but as you can see i can move it a little bit Okay, but usually here is where, see there's a little dust, there's a little bit of dust in there. So that's why having the different brushes is kind of neat because see I can go in there and I can pull out the dust. Okay, so here is where you go and you kind of like cut, you want to brush around in here too. Okay, now a little hint. When you're, when you're cleaning here, it's a good time to take everything out and then just give it all a nice, good brush at the same time. Okay, you, that way, you know, you just brush out everything. Usually you'll find like threads around here and lint around here. I just recently cleaned mine so there isn't that much to see. Just a little bit since I embroidered. A little bit and then I just go underneath the knife too and I'll just pull out like this and it's just really to get as much dust out of here as possible now I recommend doing this part right here once a month okay I usually take my bobbin out and I'll clean around the bobbin area every time I'm gonna use the machine okay because when I go to oil it I'll clean this area out then oil it, and then start working. But once a month, I'll do the whole thing, okay? Because you want to get all that lint out because the lint can get in the way of your cutting, of your, your knife right here. This is where it cuts the, the uh, you know, the, the color changes and the tails. And you don't want anything messing up with the bobbin because the bobbin can mess up your, you know, that can mess up your tension on your machine, and stuff if you let it build up so you don't want to so as you can see this is like super clean and it's okay and stuff so let me show you how to put everything back together you're just gonna take this right here and this places right here okay and you just place it like that see how nice and neat and then you just take your little plate and you just place it right on top see and you'll see that it just snaps right in and then you just take your little screws and put your screws back in. And I usually just screw them in with my hands, you know, at first. Let's see, pull it go in. Just take your time. It's because I'm standing. Let me sit down. And let me do one at a time. Okay, righty tighty. So you just turn it to the right. I'm turning it to the right there you go see it's in okay so this one's going in there you go then I'm gonna take my other screw and I'm just gonna put it in here and remember righty tighty so you just take your time screwing it in nothing should be forced you don't force anything okay like I said, do this when you have time, when you're, you know, the, the room is calm and enjoy it. Enjoy, enjoy cleaning your machine because this is your baby. Okay. And exactly what I'm doing here, this is the 1055 um, X. You do this on the six needle machine too. The exact same way. 
nothing changed. Then you take this and all you do is you just tighten it up, okay? Now don't make it super tight where you can't, you know, do it. You just wanna make sure that it's just tight, but you know, you don't have to go overboard. Don't You don't wanna break or damage your screws or anything. So you just wanna make sure that it's tight enough. So I just tighten it just a little bit. There you go, just that way I know it's in. There you go, just a little. And then the other one, let's see, it's for tightening to do. There you go. Yep, it's good. All right, good. All right, awesome. So now we took, a, we, uh, took out all the lint in all the areas that you need to take it out, which is on the top area and right here on the bobbin area. Now let's talk a little bit about the rest of the maintenance that you have to do, okay? So the rest of the maintenance is the oiling, okay? I wanna show you how to oil it. And also I wanna tell you a little bit about here changing your needles as well. And also you're gonna have some dust that may, you know, some lint, not really dust, but it's lint that may build up around here. Now, what I use, what I do, is just take your little brush and just go like this. That's it. Okay? And that takes care of whatever lint you see that's kind of like just laying there on top of these little um, niches right here. Okay? So I just take the, the thing and I just go like this, gently. Okay? Now, let me, let's talk about the oily. All right. Now, I usually use oil like this. Okay, always make sure that you're using machine oil. Okay, oil for your sewing machines. And there's also, they sell these, these as well. Okay, these are good also. What you wanna do is you wanna go for a product that has these types of tips. Okay, let me try to see if you can focus. These are easy because it helps you to control the drops that you're putting in, okay? Um, unfortunately, you don't get something like this with your machine. What you usually get with the machine is something like this, which is fine. What I usually recommend that um, people do is what I don't like about this, and I'll tell you right now is, okay, let me put the other two down. You can unscrew this, but the thing is that you cut the hole, okay? for the oil to come out. And then what happens is sometimes this is very watery and it can just just spill out, okay? And it's more than one drop that you're putting in. So usually what, I, what I'm what i thinking in my own mind is I went and this, this screws in so that way, you know, it doesn't spill or anything. But what I'm going to do is, you know, I bought some of these, okay? And just take the, the machine oil from there and just refill this. Just refill this and then you can use this because this is what I really like. It has the point and the point really helps you to control how much oil you're um, putting out. Okay? So it's just something that I wanted to share with you guys. All right, so let's turn on the machine and let's talk about oiling this baby. Okay? So I'm going to push the camera a little bit back. Let me lift you up because I want you guys to see all the steps. I don't want to skip anything because I think that's really, really, really important. And that's something that sometimes people do. I notice in videos, they skip the steps and I don't like that. Anyway, because it leaves, still leaves you hanging. Okay, so I'm turning on my machine. Okay, I want to make sure you see everything here. All right, so as soon as you turn on the machine, you're going to see that it, you get that little... Um, I, I, if you rewind the tape, you'll see it. It had it had a little message that say, make sure you put a piece of uh, 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 oil in your machine on a daily basis. Okay, so I'm going to click on here. All right. So now what's going to happen is right here, where you have the the little um, tray. I click on that, and then this is what you get. You get this little uh, bottle of the oil with the little drop. Okay. I want you to click on that. And what's gonna happen is when I hit this okay button, this is going to reposition the bobbin so that you can oil it, okay? So I'm going to leave this facing the bobbin so that you guys can see how it moves. But just to let you know, what I am doing is I am hitting that okay button. 
All right, so I don't know if you caught it, but it, it did move, okay? Now, this is what you do, okay? Um, you take your, let's put this out here. There you go. Let me look at this out here. I'm sorry, it's just I want to make sure I got the right camera angles. Okay, this is where I oil it, okay? Um, I usually oil it right here. Okay, another place, you know, the reason why I oil it here, or you can oil it right here too, all right? Um, a lot of times what, what I do is I do both places. I just do one drop here, okay, one drop right in here, and I just do one. There's a drop, and then I go ahead in here, and then I do another drop. Okay, so I do it in two places. I do it back here. And then I go and I do it right here. Okay? So that's how I do it. All right? And stuff. So that way I can make sure the whole thing is, is oiled really, really nicely. And I've never had an issue with my machine. And stuff. So now you can take your bobbin. Okay? Remember, you're supposed to have two inches of tail. Okay? I usually have more than that. But, you know, there some people take the bobbin. And let me just push it back a little bit. Some people take the bobbin and they hold it like this and they put it in. Me, I just put it in this way because I like to hear the snap because that way I know for sure it's in there correctly. So I usually go like this and then you're going to hear a snap when I push it in. There you go. That's the snap. Now I know it's in there right. I take whatever tail is in there and I just pop it right back in the case like that. And then I just push this back like that. And then I just close this up and I'm good. All right. Now let's talk about these little needles here because you can also oil these. Now you don't have to do this every day. Oiling the bobbin is you have to do that every day. But once a month, okay, as I clean this and then I oil that and I change all my needles, okay. Um, move that. Okay, hold on. I want to position the camera so that we can take a look at the needles in detail. All right. There we go. That looks good. Yeah, let me move this down. All right. So here we go. Needles. All right. So once a month, okay, like I said, that's, this is my good cleaning once a month routine, okay? The bobbin you do every time you're going to turn on your machine and you're going to use it. You're going to want to oil this right here. However, oiling my um, my needles, I do that monthly as I clean this, all right? So this is how you do that. What you do is you're going to pull this down and you're going to put a drop of oil in each of these, okay? And this is how I do it. I pick this up. And then as you see, here's this like little felt right here. I just do it right on top of the felt and I go this way. See, here's a drop of oil. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then I just place the oil right on top, but by this silver thing, okay? Right here, all right? And then I take the other one, lower it. I do the same thing right here. One drop of oil. Okay. There you go. Now, when you get to the third, you're going to notice that you can only do one. You can do two. To do three and four, okay, let me show you how you do three and four. You got to go to your machine. Pop this in. Hit okay. All right. Then what you do is click on three, because you can only do like two at a time. And then you're gonna go back, push it down right here. And then as you can see, now I have the third needle. And then now I can take this third needle and I can push it down and the fourth too. Okay, this one, I don't know why it's not coming down as much, but this one, this one's not. But you have to like, you know, the third, I'll just go like this. I can just push it in. There you go. There's the fourth. There you go. 
five can't. So what I'm doing is I'm going to the screen and I'm hitting five. Let me see if I hit four, if three will come down. I guess that's, yep, now three came down all the way. Okay, but that's all you do. You just have to, now if this one came down all the way. I'll just oil that. There you go. Five, these won't come down. Well, this one's coming down. But that's what you do. You just move it around. Sometimes you just got to play with it. Okay, there you go. This one came down. All right, so let me go down to five. Six is down. This one's down. And seven come down? Nope. And five's only half. Okay. I bet you now five will come down. Yep. See? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Sometimes you can get confused. There's five. I know I got six. Seven will come down. There you go. Now I got to do eight. So let me go down to nine. Here goes eight will come down. I'm doing eight. Nine will come down. It's just a little bit. I guess nine, the, it doesn't go all the way down because of the plate, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Ten will come down. Most likely, that's what it is. All right. But I'll, I can still get in here. There you go. There. All right. So that's it. That is it, okay? Now I put away my oil. So what I've done is I've oiled my bobbin area. I've, I've oiled the bobbin area and I've oiled all my needles. Now, I also recommend, and I'm not gonna do this now because I've done this in the past, is, you know, I've already changed them. But usually what I'll do is, I do this really more often than a month, but the thing is the standard thing is when you have needles, you should not be using them for more than eight hours because these needles do get dull, okay? So if they get dull, what'll happen is it'll make a bigger hole in your fabric. So highly recommend that you get into the habit of putting fresh needles in your machines at, after eight hours of sewing. I usually have to put fresh needles in every other day. And this is the tool that you use to, to do it. So what it is, is you go in here, you take this, and your needle will come right out, okay? And then always use the good needles. I use Organ, and this is the 7511. I'm gonna put this needle right back in because it is a new needle. It's not an old needle. I haven't even used it yet. And when you push the needle in, one of the things, let me um, do a close-up of this because this is a, a common mistake that a lot of people do. And hold on. Okay, guys, sorry about that. You know, sometimes life gets in the way of a video. <laughs> anyway, um, here I am. I am back. All right. So one of the things that I wanted to show you before uh, I got interrupted was I want you to take a look, and here's my needle. I want you to look at, this is where the needle was removed. Look at this space right in here, okay? And let me try to position the camera so that you can really take a look at it because this is something that a lot of people mess up on. I wanna try to position it so that you can see exactly what is going on. Here, let me try to, there you go, perfect. You guys can see. All right. Now, let me show you something. Here's the needle, okay? Now, the needle has to be inserted in here. Now, one of the things that I want you to notice is right in here. This, as you can see, this is the top of the needle hitting the top of that. Sometimes what happens is people put in the needles and they don't put it in all the way and then they tighten it. You need to make sure that it is all the way. So make sure that when you are putting in the needle, that the top of the needle is hitting that top section. So here I'm going to put this needle in and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about I'm using my fingers, okay? So as you can see, I am pushing the needle in and I don't know if you guys see that, okay? But I'm gonna move the needle back and forward. Please pay attention to where I'm pointing. See how it is? See, this is the top of the needle. It's hitting all the way at the top. 
this is when you tighten it. So when you hold your needle and you put it in and it's all the way on the top, right there, you see? That is when you take your screwdriver, and I know that you guys see that. Oh. And then, okay, hold on, I'm taking it out. See how it is? It's the top of the needle is right on the top, okay? So that's how you change your needles. Now, all these demonstrations that I've done, okay, that I have just done right now, I have done this on the Brother 1055X. Now, I want to take you over to, if in case you have a Brother 6 needle machine, okay, I want to show you it's the same exact thing, okay? The only difference between these two machines is just the amount of needles. The way that you change the needles, exactly the same. The way that you would go ahead and clean this area is exactly the same. The way that you would remove this top, exactly the same, and you would dust it out. So whether you have the six needle or the 10 needle, this is how you do the maintenance. So guys, I really hope that you have found this video to be really helpful. I tried to make do it as detailed as possible out of your machines. Um, you know, as I said, maintenance is so, so crucial in order for you to get, you know, the best quality um, stitching from your machines. You really got to take care of it. And I also do highly recommend that you go and get these machines serviced at least once a year by a professional because what they do is they take it apart they vacuum the inside and everything and they they put fresh parts in there um i know it can get costly and it can be uh problematic you know taking the machine back and forth to the shop but to be honest you know think of it long term you know this is a big investment you know i mean i know i spent a lot of money i purchased both of my machines my six needle machine cost me roughly $11,000. My uh, 10 needle machine was 15 grand. So as you can see, that is already a huge investment. So this is not something that I plan on playing around with. And I'm sure that if you own these machines, you're not gonna be playing around with it either, okay? So anyway, guys, hope you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, I am all about teaching people about embroidering, sir, uh, sewing, and all these other crafts. I also do happy embroidery hour, um, embroidery happy hour every Friday at eight o'clock standard Eastern time. Um, and that's just, you know, for me to interact with you guys, answer questions, help you guys out, and give you guys tips and advice on things that I've learned about running an embroidery business. So you guys have a great day and enjoy your machines. And as I said, take care of your machines. So in the future, your machines will take care of you. So happy sewing and happy embroidering. Bye.